Mm -hmm. Remain standing. Everybody with your right hand, I swear to say, the swear the testimony you're about to give to be the truth, the whole truth. Nothing but the truth to help you, God. I do. I do. Please be seated. This is the matter of Joshua Cordell. Let's record Joshua Cordell, Joshua Cordell. Let the record show that Mrs. Duzik is present in the prosecutor's office. Ms. Monroe is present. The attorney of the court will appoint to represent Joshua for this hearing only, and Ms. Bennett is present from the intake department. Your name, please? Joshua Cordell. How old are you, Joshua? 13. Your name, ma'am? Angelita Ivara Stack. Are you the child's mother? Yes. Your name, sir? Todd Stack. Are you the child's father, stepfather? Step uh, were the three of you advised of your rights? <laughs> yes. yes. Do you understand what your rights are? Yes. yes. Any questions about them? No. All right, we're here today for uh, a charge of battery. And that happened in your home, is that right, ma'am? Yes. Do you want to tell the court what happened? Um, Joshua went up to his sister with a pair of scissors. I didn't see it. She came out of the bathroom screaming. And I could see a red mark on her forehead. So when I went into the bathroom, I asked him about it. He said it was an accident. And I told him to go to his room and he didn't want to. So I grabbed him by the wrist and tried to take him into his room. He wouldn't go with me. So I grabbed him around his shoulder, you know, like up here to take him in his room. He didn't want to. He finally went in his room. He threw stuff at me and then he walked out of his room when I walked out, followed me, and then he punched me in the face with the fist. Um, he split my lip and made my head go back against the wall. And then he hit me again. And then I tried to get him back in his room and he didn't want to go. So I told him he had to leave the house if he wasn't going in his room. And then he wanted to go in his room. And then I told him no, he had to go outside. That I didn't want him in the house if he was gonna, you know, be hitting on me or anybody else and then he choked me then he spit on me and I told my daughter to call 911 and they came and he was outside and they took him. Is this the first time something like this has happened? To this extent where he punched me? Yeah. To what extent in the past? <clears throat> um, where he doesn't like what he's told to do to go into his room or to do whatever, and Joshua gets angry and throws things. He's hit his stepdad before. Um, he, I found out after this all happened, he's punched his sister before. She didn't want to tell me because she didn't want him to get in trouble, but then after they took him away, she told me. How old is she? She's 14. So she's a year older than Joshua? Yes. Is Joshua in school? Yes. What school does he attend? Harrison. And what grade is he in? Seventh. And how well does he perform in school? Not good. Because does he, get he has in trouble a, in school too? Yeah, because he has a, a attitude or discipline problem. He's asked to do something and he doesn't like it, so he gets disrespectful with the teachers. Um, they send him down to the office and a few times he got disrespectful with the principal. Um, he had to attend summer school this year. He was in summer school for two days and they kicked him out for his attitude and disrespect. Is he in special ed? No, he doesn't need to be. He's smart. He's, he's capable of doing all the work. He just has a problem with discipline and listening to authority. Are you afraid of Joshua? Yes. Do you want him to come back into your home? No. So at this time you don't want to take him home with you? No, I, I don't know what else to do with him. I'm Have you had him to any counseling or yes, any evaluation? Yes, he's been in counseling since he was in third grade. And where is that? Where was that? Now he goes to see Marty Odanovich at St. Margaret Mercy, mm -hmm. outpatient. We put him, we had a problem with him before to where his temper was getting out of control, and he was um, an outpatient at St. Margaret Mercy Hospital. He was in there for 10 days. So it's not like we haven't tried. It's not like we're trying to see what the problem is. It, I'm just not getting through. He's smart and he has the ability to do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Guzik, do you feel that you'll go forward with this delinquent charge? or I, I feel, given the information I've been provided, I, I have to be honest. Today the court will find probable cause to believe this child has committed a delinquent act. Refer the matter to the prosecutor's office to file a petition. Uh, the court will order that um, the child also today be made a temporary ward of the Division of Family and Children in order that um, he undergo a psychological evaluation. The court will order that um, he also have a neurological evaluation by a neurologist. And I will order that the Division of Family and Children find placement for him. Joshua, do you have any questions? No, ma'am. All right. 
This hearing is adjourned. Thank you. Did you know when when you got mad at your mom and got really upset and things happened like they did, did you know that this is eventually what would happen or did you think it wouldn't come to this point? Mm -mm. You didn't know this is what would happen? Are you sorry you did it now? Yes, ma'am. Did you talk to your mom at all about that? Because mm -hmm. the lady asked me if um, I wanted to talk to my mom and I told her um, I didn't want to talk to my mom. Cause I just didn't want to talk to my mom. Do you wish you could talk to her now? She, if I talk to her now, she won't want to talk to me. Cause when he went into the court and he made me and my mom and my stepdad stand over there, then she, oh, she didn't even say nothing. So just all quiet. Do you think maybe she wanted to say something to you, but wanted at the same time to let you know that? What you did was wrong, and so maybe she better not show any emotion toward you? Mm -hmm. I don't know. She didn't say nothing. I don't know why. What did you want her to say? I just hoped she would say something so I would be able to talk to her. If, if she were here right now, what would you want to say to her? I just told her I was sorry. I asked her if she would forgive me, but she wouldn't. We've been trying to deal with Joshua for years. Um, he's not been a bad kid physically all these years. I, I think it's just finally got to that point, and I don't want him to think, okay, well, you know what happened, they're going to take me back. I'll, he needs to know that he needs to work on it, and I think he doesn't even know what's happening. Were you sad? Yeah, because my mom said she didn't want me, so. Do you think that that's really how she feels? Yeah. I, I, I want to go live with my dad in Texas, but I don't think they'll let me. Going in there, I didn't know if the, I was going to be able to, to do it or not. I mean, I knew that's what I was going to do before I went into court, you know, that I had to say, you know, do I want him in the home or don't I? And I knew that I wanted to say he shouldn't be back in the home, but I didn't know if I was going to be able to. I, I wanted to say, no, I want to take him home, you know, he's my son, I, I need him at home, but... I also knew that I had to do the best thing to help him. And I thought at that point, that's what we need to do. When do you think all this kind of started? When did you really start feeling angry? Was it a long time ago? I've been, I've been like this for a long time. I don't know. Can you think at all why you feel the way you do? I didn't get to see my dad this summer. Do you think that that's why you show anger a lot of times? Because you want to live with your dad? Or why, why do you think you act out? I don't know. Because my mom makes me mad. Because my sister, she'll try to get me in trouble so she'll get all the attention. Do you feel like it's always been this way? I know it's me too, but it's a lot of her too. So what did you think? Today, when you were in court, what did you think was going to happen? Mm -hmm. I but I knew she was going to say she didn't want me. So, how'd you know that? Cause that's what she told the um, police officer when the police officer came. How do you think your dad would feel about all this? Do you think that he would think you're right, or that you were wrong, or that you need to? I think some... I was mm, wrong for what I did to my mom the pain I put it through and he'd tell me that that was wrong and everything and then he, but he'd think I was right because I didn't like bust through all this. Do you ever feel like you want to burst inside? Sometimes. Just get really mad. And then I get in trouble because I do something stupid. Do you know when you're doing it? that it's something you're not supposed to do? Can you tell before you do it? Do you think to yourself, Josh, I better not do this? Sometimes I do when I'm like, but when I'm really, really mad, then I don't think about it. I just do it. I don't know what's next. We um, filled out the paperwork and 
It's like I was signing his life away because, I, you know, they're asking for all his information, you know, his birth certificate. And so it's like I'm giving him away. But And so they're supposed to call and let us know what the next step is, what they're going to do with him. And If you could have a perfect situation right now, what would it be? Perfect. My mom would be standing right here, and I tell her I was sorry and asked her if she'd forgive me. And then I just tell her that I want to live with my dad because it'd be better for both of us. So, so. do you know where you're going now or what's going to happen next? Mm -mm. Are you scared at all? Nope. Seems like a lot to be going through when you're only 13. Doesn't it? Yeah. Because, like, I don't even know where I'm going or anything. It's like they're just pulling me like I'm a dog on a leash. Okay, turn, call line two, Karen, line two. Sorry. Okay, turn, call line two, Karen, line two. All I'm doing is go over here in the shade. I want to get a shot of each one of you. Picture. Okay. One at a time. Um. Yeah. Just stand yeah, in the shade. Following. Stand over here in the shade. There you go. Hold it right there. Good. Now you know why I shot these, right? No, I'm on that This this is in case you guys run away. Because if you run away, I'm gonna give this to the police department. I'm gonna give it to every police department in the state of Indiana to find you. And then if you run away two or three times, then we're gonna put you in boys' school or girls' school. So that's why it's important from wherever we place you. Okay? You're all going to A House right now, Alternative House in Miller. Okay? Until your case manager gets in touch with you, and then they'll decide from there between your parents and the court orders. Right now or no? Do you have any idea? I think I'm going to the A house. A house? A it's alternative house. It's like a sort of like a holdover where they do evaluations. It's a 30 day placement so you can find appropriate placements. Yeah. And then you go. Three plus four is seven. seven. Well, there are a lot of complications here, and one of them that complicates it for us anyway is we have some social history on Josh. We have the psychological, we have some documentations, we have our observation, but we don't have enough input at this point in time from family to know how can we verify some of Josh's accounts of what happens in family life, uh, what's really accurate, what is a misperception, what is a fabrication, and we don't really know where we are with those things yet. Uh, so that makes it a little more difficult. Is it what you thought it would be? I expected too much of What do you expect when you're going out? Well, by the, what uh, the other boy in the car was telling me, he told me he was real nice and everybody here was real nice, but it didn't turn out to be that. He has some commonalities with other kids that are that are very hyperactive and that don't pick up on social cues and that's really, really important. I mean, small children have um, parallel play. You know, I play with blocks and you play with blocks and we don't build a tower together but we can sit on this carpet and do this together. Josh is still kind of at that stage. He doesn't know how to interact socially with other children his own age and he certainly doesn't know how to do it with kids that are older than he is or that he perceives as um, getting more attention than he does. Can you tell me what your day is like every day? Mm, get up, make your bed, eat, and then come out here and watch everybody else go to school. And then you stay here and watch TV all day. It's boring. 
he settled in pretty readily. We had trouble with how playful he is with other residents and some of his um, provocative behavior with, with other kids, starting confrontations, starting fights. He doesn't seem to read social situations. He doesn't seem to see, I'm making this other person agitated, they're angry with me. He doesn't get that. And so he doesn't respond the way that people normally do when they realize, oh, I'm arousing hard feelings in someone else, or I got them upset, or I offended them. What did some of the other kids tell you? Anything? Do they have any advice for you? Mm -mm. Oh, well, Demetrius, he does, because he asked me what happens at home, and I told him, and then he said that uh, he used to cry, too, and his dad used to uh, hit him and stuff, and he just was telling me a whole bunch of stuff to make me feel better. I want you to see. Does it help to talk to other kids who are here? A lot, yeah, because you're expressing yourself. I think anyone who observes Josh could kind of relate to um, family situations where you have kids in the back seat of the car and you want to put masking tape down and divide, you know, he's looking at me, he's touching me, he's, you know. How can you separate those behaviors and get people to, to just settle down until you can get from one location to the next? Well, if you um, kind of multiply that behavior, <laughs> you have Joshua. He will start out with someone and uh, call him a name. You're a green face. You're a such and such. And then it gets to poking. And then it gets to wanting to put his hands on someone and, and, and uh, bother them. Or he'll go up and, and fluff girls' hair. Or he'll do something. And when people start telling him, you know, leave me alone or quit it or trying to establish their own personhood, their own boundaries. He can't respond to that. He can't stop. It's not that he chooses not to. He can't. He doesn't have good control of how he's going to respond to people. He doesn't read so social situations well. He doesn't understand the messages they're giving to him. And when he does, he just plows through and ignores them. He, he continues with that behavior until he has someone absolutely livid. I think uh, I think it's going to be better if I if I go home. I mean, if I don't go home, because then things will be just better at home with my mom and my sister and my stepdad. But where do you want to be? I want to be. I I, I want to be home, but I don't want to be home because. I got like, I don't want to be home because then I know it would be better for my mom, my sister, my stepdad. I don't want to go home because I think things are just going to be the same way. It's like I miss my mom and my family, but I don't miss them. I miss them, um, but I know it's better for them. It's like I'm sacrificing myself because I know it's better for them. I'd rather have it better for them than for all of us, because I know it won't be better for all of us if I go back. If something's worse, going to end up happening. Um, when kids come through here, sort of like an emergency room triage, you're finding out what's going on with them, you're getting documentation, people are interviewing family, interviewing the child, we're observing them, our therapist is working with them, and out of that whole mix comes what needs to happen next and so there are a lot of, of consultations that go on to develop that. Um, about uh, 40 some percent of our kids go from emergency shelter back home or to a family member uh, but in Joshua's case that would not be a safe thing for everyone involved. He needs a lot more supportive services and perhaps for an extended period of time. Hopefully in the time that, that you have a child in an emergency shelter you have an enough opportunity to observe them, to document what you're seeing. So staff do that, a therapist does that, and you kind of tease out what seems to be the level of structure that this person is going to need. You're going to have behavioral constraints, you're going to have social expectations, and then also the, the therapeutic setting, which Josh does respond to. And it's very interesting because uh, we have some therapy groups here. The larger boys group, which is all ten boys, Josh barely survives being able to sit in a room for 45 minutes. He's bouncing off the walls. He has all this 
aberrant behavior. But we also have a little folks group that's four of the youngest residents that we have, and he fits into that. And in that setting, uh, another therapist conducts that group and reports Josh in, in a very different light. So you know that he's someone who needs to have less stimulus, he needs smaller group activities, he needs to be able to bond with an adult one-to-one. -one. You start seeing in what settings is Josh successful and how can we start repeating more of that so that he can carry over what he learns there to, to a larger you know, social milieu and eventually a, a public classroom and those kinds of things where he, he wouldn't survive well right now. How do you think this is all going to turn out? What do you think will happen in court today? Do you have any feeling at all about going back to court? I just hope I get to go to a placement because they told me I might be going to the Ark in Wisconsin and then they told me I'd be going to Cornerstone and I'm hoping I go to Cornerstone because when the Cornerstone lady came, she told me about Cornerstone. And then my mom, when I was in the car with her, she just told me she, that I might be going to the Ark. So I know more about Cornerstone than I do Ark, so I feel comfortable going to Cornerstone. So I don't know nothing about the Ark. Both programs um, function with, with a lot of stability and security. Uh, they're both secured, not just staff secure, but, but physically secure buildings where these are located. Uh, both of them have a lot of outdoor accoutrements, you know, the, that outdoor experience, ropes courses, that kind of thing. Um, the, the ARC program does have a, a greater intensity even than the Cornerstone program and that at this point in time uh, their uh, specialist came out to interview him and to look over all this documentation and read all these reports and is really feeling that's more appropriate. That's really more appropriate for this youngster. And if we're trying to do that within his lifetime in an expedient way because uh, to me, 12 months, 13 months, 15 months, that's not an eternity. That kind of goes by real quickly. For Josh, it's a huge percentage of his life. So if you want to do that expediently, you want to match the intensity of the program to the intensity of the child's need. When you go to court today, is there anything you want to tell the judge? Is there anything you want to say? I don't know what to say. I'm just, I'm, I don't, I'm, it's like I'm going to be shy when I go in there because I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to know when to tell her and how to tell her and if to tell her. I wrote it we may stand in a minute for everybody raise your right hand, I swear I sin. I swear the testimony that you're about to give would be the truth, the whole truth. Nothing but the truth to help you, God. I do. I do. Please be seated. This is the matter of Joshua Cordell, cause number J99-1404. Let the record show that Mrs. Guzik is present from the prosecutor's office. Mr. Klavik is present. Probation officer, Ms. Morenzi, is present from Alternative House. We also have Ms. Flores, who is the attorney for the Division of Family and Children, and Ms. Daniels, who is the case manager on this case. Will you state your name, please? Joshua. How old are you, Joshua? 13. Okay, your name, ma'am? Angelita. And are you the child's mother? Yes. Your name, sir? Todd Stack. And you're the stepfather? So All right. Uh, were you advised of your rights? Yes. Do you understand what your rights are? Yes. Any questions about them? Uh, do you want to um, hire a lawyer to represent Joshua before we proceed today, or do you want to proceed today without a lawyer? We're going to proceed. Okay. Do you want to proceed today without a lawyer as well, Joshua? Could you answer out loud for me? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm going to read this petition to you, Joshua, and then I'm going to ask you to admit or deny the allegations that I read to you, okay? All right. It says here that on or about the fourth day of September 1999, uh, said child did knowingly or intentionally in a rude, insolent, or angry manner touch Angelita Ibarra Stack, uh, which resulted in bodily injury. You are charged with battery, which would be a Class A misdemeanor if you were an adult. Do you admit or deny that? Do you understand? Pardon me? I admit. You admit? Okay, tell me what happened. And speak loud enough to me. 
for a second. Can you hear? Okay. Yes. Tell me what happened. Speak up loud enough so I can hear you because this fan's going From on. the beginning? What happened that day with your mom? Um, I was in the bathroom cutting my hair, and um, my sister came into the mirror. I was in the and I told her um, it looked like she needed a haircut, and I started snipping the scissors and um, cut her on the top of her eyebrow. And she went crying out of the bathroom and told my mom. My mom come in and told me um, to go to my room, and I told her I didn't want to go to my room, and I didn't want to go to my room. And then um, she dragged me to my room. Well, she didn't drag me, but, um, and then on the way out, I grabbed a um, towel rack, and it busted off the wall, and then when I was in my room, I threw it. And um, it hit the wall, and one of the pieces had hit the wall and hit her in her leg. And then um, I came out of the room, and then she told me to go back to my room, and I told her, no, no, no. And then um, I told her finally I would go back to the room. She said, no, now you can go outside. So um, then we were just fighting again, and I pushed her up into the wall, and then that's when I hit her, and then um, I went outside. And then. What did you hit her? I don't really. In the face, on the arm? In the face. But it was an open fist. It wasn't close. Okay. So then you went outside. And then the police came? Okay. Uh, based upon the admission today, the court will grant this petition and find that Joshua Douglas Cordell is a child, in, uh, a delinquent child. Um, Let's see. Mr. Plavik, you have submitted to the court a psychological evaluation that was completed on May 6th, which was prior to this incident happening. Is that right? That's correct, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, have you prepared a predispositional report? Not at this time. Uh, okay. Is there... Um, okay, let's back up. Last a hearing, I ordered that a neurological examination be performed, and I, I have information that it was performed October 5th, which was two days ago. Right. And do you have a report indicating the results of that? No, ma'am. Okay. Have you had any contact with the doctor that did the report? Yes. Or the evaluation? Yes. And what, if anything, can you tell me at this time about the cycle of the neurological evaluation? Everything was normal. Everything came out. Nothing, you know, seemed out of place or anything. So he suggested that any problems that Joshua is having is not neurological. Okay. Um, today we have uh, a choice. We can proceed with disposition or partial disposition today, or I can continue the matter for disposition and allow Mr. Plavik to um, prepare a written report for the court. Let me ask him one question first. Do you feel that a continuance would allow you additional time to investigate the matter further and prepare a, a more comprehensive recommendation, or do you feel prepared to go forward today, providing the mother uh, wants to go forward today? Well, at this point, Your Honor, uh Basically, going on the evidence that when the when the uh, psychological evaluation was prepared, uh, it really didn't point to any type of re residential placement. But uh, since then, we've had incidents occur. Uh, at this time, I can go forward because it may be very well in the best interest of the family and the child that he no longer remain in the home. Uh, in talking with Ms. Daniels, the caseworker, she has evidence that uh, there have been many other interventions that have been tried at this point, uh, and none of them seem to have worked. Uh, so you feel that you'd be prepared today to go forward with the recommendation, is that right? That's correct. All right. Do you want to proceed with disposition today? Yes. Okay. Why don't I start with Ms. Daniels? At this time, the parents are requesting that he be placed in a residential facility. I had him interviewed um, by the, the ARC program and the Cornerstone program. He's been accepted at both. And they believe that he's appropriate, but they feel that because of the milieu of children at the ARC, that he will be, that, he, that would be a more appropriate placement for him at this time. Um, Joshua, is there anything that you'd like to say today? Um, I what contact, if any, have you had with your mother while you've been at Alternative House? She's came to visit me, I think, twice. And she took me for appointments a few other times. Mm -hmm. And we rode together in the car. And I think two times uh, Todd was in the car also. Mm -hmm. And how did that go? Well... Is there anything you'd like to say, ma'am? Um, we don't have... Um, 
either way which the cornerstone or the arc we're not familiar with either program mm -hmm. and we know that family therapy with Joshua is something that's I, we really need that and I don't know how easy it would be to do that if he's placed farther away from home than you know the cornerstone that's really our only concern is that we are still able to continue with our family sessions with him well I can tell you that the court um, only places children in facilities that provide for treatment of the entire family. Uh, and I know personally that the ARC is a facility that does that very well. So that even if he was in um, Milwaukee, they will continue to provide family counseling, even if it's by telephone. And then they pay for the family to come out so many times each month to the facility so that all of you can be face to face in a therapy situation. And then once Joshua is returned to the family, they continue with aftercare um, in the home. Mm -hmm. So there will be treatment for the entire family at either the ARC or the Cornerstone. So as uh, Ms. Marensic said, um, even though you said you have family contacts there, Milwaukee is not that far away right. from here. I mean, I could place them in southern Indiana. Some places could be five hours away. Right. Uh, but I think that it's still uh, feasible for you to get there. Plus, as I said, that program itself really does provide for a lot of uh, interaction with the family. So I, that would not be a concern for you okay. at this point. Is there anything else that you'd like to say today? I was reading the psychological evaluation that Dr. Wolf performed back in May um, of this year, and, and it goes on to talk about uh, some of Joshua's shortcomings and some work that he needs to, to do. Um, and I was happy to hear you say that you feel that you desperately need to be in family therapy because he doesn't really address that, uh, which was what I was going to address today, is that Joshua may have work to do, but we all know that our lives really depend on those around us right. and what we do in our interactions and how we grow as a person. So I really need you to make the commitment that you will uh, comply with the program of care, treatment, and rehabilitation mm -hmm. for Joshua because as cute as Joshua is and as much as we'd like having him around us, he's still your son and at some point I will return him to you. And so we need to make sure that the work is done to get him back there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we remain committed. If we weren't committed, we wouldn't you know, have gone to this step to try to get you know, more help that we weren't able to get on our own. So whatever they think is appropriate for us, we will do. Okay. Um, I think Ms. Flores, um, because today I have adjudicated him delinquent, I'll make him a ward of the court at this position now and order that um, the probation department secure placement for him at the ARC. And I will, of course, authorize expenditure of necessary funds by the Division of Family and Children, but he will be awarded the court so that your petition will be dismissed or you can file a petition or motion to dismiss it because he's now being placed this way. Okay, yeah. otherwise you'd have to file a petition. Mm -hmm. We don't really need to go through all of that. Um, what I will do today is, um, do you want him placed on official probation as well or what is your... Uh, Okay. Yes, I would believe so. We could put him on probation that way when he's uh, released. We, we made him on probation and make sure things are going well at the home for a period of time. Okay. What I'll do today is, um, as I said, make the child a ward of the court, order that he be placed at the ARC. I will order that uh, he be placed on official probation, but I will waive his initial and ongoing fee at this time in that he will be in placement, so he won't be, no probation officer will be coming out to the home, but rather they'll, by phone, they'll be contacting and probably some visits. Um, so what I'll do is I said waive those fees, but when he comes back home, they could be reinstated, and it'll probably be like five dollars a month. But at this time, I will not assess those fees. Okay. okay. We need to set a date for a six-month review. Joshua, do you have any questions, honey? No, ma'am. Okay. Well, good luck to you. Any questions? No, I just want you know to be on record so that Joshua knows that it's not because we don't want you at home, it's because we want you at home and we want things to go better. I just think, you know, it's something that needs to be on record so that he knows he's aware of what's going on. And, and I think probably more importantly than you telling that to me, that perhaps you can tell him that on your own after this hearing and then continue to do that uh, and really actions speak louder than words. So maybe by, you know, your therapy sessions, he'll understand why, okay? All right, this hearing's adjourned. Thank you. The placement will be either next Wednesday or Thursday. The transportation has already been arranged, and they need to speak with you. Okay.
so that they can give you directions and make sure all your questions are answered. And I'll make sure that um, Josh gets a copy of the video tomorrow okay. so that he can um, watch the, the tape and understand okay, where, where he's going. going. And if he has any questions, they can be answered before he goes. So okay. we should take uh, like his winter coat and stuff like yes, that. Yes, a before. lot of um, winter coat because it's cold in Wisconsin oh, yeah, or in the winter know. time. <laughs> but I did um, state that he needs things like um, blue jeans, um, t-shirts, and if he may, he can take some shorts and things that he he can wear on the unit. But he'll need um, comfortable clothing like jogging suits. If he has some, send all of those. Gym shoes and then some dress clothes just in case they have outings um, off campus. And other than that, your question about visitation, they'll address that with you as well. Um, they'll tell you, you arrange the dates and the times with them um, according to your personal schedule. And they'll let you know how many times they need you to come per month. Um, and they will um, take care of the expenses at least once or twice a month. And you can choose to either stay in the guest house or make your own accommodations in a hotel and they'll assist with that as well. Um, as for transportation, they also assist with that if you have a problem with that. or um, They usually set up transportation by train or bus with the parents if you'd like to take that route as well. Other than that, the Lake County Division of Family and Children is dismissed and the probation department takes over from here. It's going to be a ward of probation and his um, probation is on hold until he gets back. So like she said, you won't have a probation officer coming out to you. So what does that mean really that it's on hold? Does that mean that he's... That, um, they're not going to have any services coming to your home. It's not going to go into effect until he returns from placement. Okay. And like she said, they will offer you aftercare services when he um, returns home. And you'll receive those up to six months. And any child that's placed in any of the Odyssey Arc or Cornerstone programs uh -huh. can contact the facility at any time. If they have a problem, even after the six months, they're always available to you. Okay. So. You will never be alone. So did you understand everything? Yeah. You ready? You understand this not because we don't want you, it's because you need to get some help so you can be a better person. So you're not a statistic. So that you don't end up going out there and doing something you don't want to do? Okay, she's talking to you. Yeah, she knows. Right, because you know that when you get mad you do stuff you don't want to do, right? Because mm -hmm. you didn't want to hit me, did you? We want you to go there so that they can help you understand how to deal with things when you get mad. Okay. And they're probably going to come next week. So you'll be at the alternative house for another couple days. Probably being closed up Monday. Is there anything you want? Mm -mm. You want your blankets? Your no. still fit you? We need to buy you a new coat, don't we? A new what? Coat. A winter coat. Did we get one of you one last year? Wow, well, look. Okay, if there's anything you want, call me. And make sure to give it to him. Okay. Anything else? No? You sure? Well, why are you so quiet? It's nothing to say. So did you hope for a placement at Cornerstone or were you prepared for a placement at either place? We were prepared for either one. Yeah, I mean we were hoping that we could have Cornerstone so that you know we would be able to have more contact with him as far as physical contact seeing him, but we also know that the ARC is, is a good place for him. Do you have any concern at all that a, a more permanent placement like ARC will make him more angry? Well, at first. Oh, yeah. I mean, he'll be, for lack of a better word, pissed off when he gets up there because he's away from home and he's still going to have it in his mind that we don't want him, that he's not around, even though we've told him, we told him in the courtroom, we told him outside the courtroom. You know, he's 13 years old. You know, he doesn't understand the rationale that he's going there to get help. You know, it's going to take time for him to understand that, you know, he does have a problem and that he needs the help that he can't control his own anger. And I think with it being, you know, a long-term program, a year, I mean, after 
like six months, then he's going to start to realize, okay, you know, I can be done being mad. I have to be here. And then once he really starts to participate in his therapy, it might kind of start to sink in. Okay, this was for the best. I can go home. When I go home, I'll know how to deal with stuff, not only at home, but at school and, you know, in social scenes, whatever. I think he'll realize it. But it's a long way away.